Hi, welcome to episode two of Change History, part of the Google Ads API developer series. My name is Sasha and I'm here in NYC. Quick overview of our agenda. We'll talk about the two APIs that are responsible for providing access to change history. Then we'll talk about caveats and limitations, and then I'm going to do a demo in my terminal to show you some of the ways that you can engage in the change status service specifically. So the two API services, I've talked about these in the last video, but I'm going to give you a quick overview. We've got the change status service and the change event service. The way that I like to think about these two services is change status does a good job of answering the question of did this change, whereas change event answers the question how did this change. Change status exposes aggregate summaries, whereas change event individual changes. And both of these operate over a specific window of time. Caveats and limitations for these two services. The change status service offers 90 days of data, whereas change event offers 30 days of data. And for both, there is a limit of 10,000 rows per request. And now for my favorite part, the demo. I'm going to hop into my terminal, and we're going to play around a little bit with Gackle. OK, so I'm here in my terminal. And on the left, you've got a Gackle query. On the right, you have the results to that particular query. So there are a lot of different things that you might want to accomplish with change status. One example of something is answering the question, did any campaigns change since last week? Let's say you have a job that runs on a weekly basis and fetches campaigns uh, that have changed uh, since a particular point in time. So what we could do is write a query where we're going to select the change status uh, last change date time and the resource type from the change status resource where the change status last change date time was during, and let's change this from last month to, and then run this again. And we should see the results on the right. OK, so this is referring to January 20th. Uh, and it was a re uh, the resource that was changed it was an ad group. I have not specified what resource I want to know was the last one that, that changed. So let me change this now to include a new filter, which where change status resource type equals campaign. And run this one more time. And where there we go. So we see that I had a campaign that changed on January January 25th. Now I have this set to a limit of one right now, so we're basically picking any random campaign that changed in the last seven days. That's not particularly useful. Instead, let's add an order by and pick either the first campaign that changed within that window of time or the last campaign. So order by change, change status, last change date time. And we'll do ascending to find the first campaign that changed within a certain window of time, specifically the last seven days. So this allows me to kind of specify a window of time that I can use to determine what campaigns have changed. And what I can do with this is I can, for instance, page through these results by manually setting a start date and an end date for the window and narrowing it. So for instance, I could say instead of just one campaign, we're going to limit it to 10 campaigns. And let's see what the date here was. It was on the 25th, right? So let me copy that. Um, we'll change last change date time between the 25th and the 26th. and also remains a, a campaign resource type. Let's run this one more time. Great, so I actually have two campaigns that changed within that window of time. And I could use that to continue rolling that window uh, over. So I would increment the between max and min, let's say from, I could change this to be the 20th, and I could change this to be the 25th to see what has changed within that window of time. And because these change status objects also include a resource name, if I had this job that needed to run and determine what campaigns it should fetch, it can use these results to determine what campaigns have changed during that window of time and need to be refetched, or what campaigns have not changed. And I can do that at 
a lot of different resource type granularities. So I could do that via an add group. So let's see if any add groups changed between the first, uh, between January 20th and January 25th. It looks like a bunch of them did. Um, I could say I want to find the first one. So I would limit that to just the first results for that. Or I could change it to the absolute last one that changed during that window of time. Cool. So that's one example of how you can use the change status service to create this window that you inspect and you can move the sliding window to determine what resources have changed. So there we have it. You can use the change status service to query for a specific window of time to determine if any resources have changed during that resource that window of time. And you can use that to then determine which resources you want to fetch. For instance, if you want to update your database or run a job for newly added resources, there's a lot of flexibility with what you can do with these results because they indicate to you something has changed. And there we go. Let me switch back to the slides. And there we have it. That was our quick exploration of change status. Uh, that is the end of this episode. As always, feel free to reach out to us for support and watch out for the next episode. Mm -hmm.